All right, we are live. And on today's episode, I interview an ERYT 500 yoga teacher, mentor, and Lululemon ambassador. She's the founder of the Sama Yoga House, an international yoga school that combines traditional and modern approaches to create a holistic education and a life-changing experience for students. Welcome back to the Winner Circle, Christine Anderson. Hi, I'm so grateful to be here again. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's exciting to have you back on. We last connected on episode 36, and that was back in January 2021. So, like, just under three years ago, which is crazy. Or even three, just over three years ago, I guess, which is crazy. Like, I don't even understand how time works, but it doesn't seem like it seems like I was just chatting with you the other day. Wow. So, I wow. miss you. I was going to, wow, three years. It, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah, um, happy to be here. So grateful. So happy to have you. I know there's a lot a lot of changes in your life as well, and I'm excited to delve into them. Um, the first question I ask every episode, I asked you last time, and I'm going to ask you again. What do you love about your world right now, Christine? Not about the external world, but what do you love about your personal world right now? The first word that comes to my mind is alignment. Um, I am feeling very aligned with myself, with my purpose, with my work, with my community, with my body, with my partner, um, and the direction that I'm going. It, I would say that word alignment is, is really the, the anchor of where I'm at right now. Beautiful. I'm really happy about that. I'm excited to ask the like some of the foundational elements to this alignment um, but first your mission what is your personal mission and all the roles that you play um, as a yoga teacher as a mentor as an entrepreneur um, as a teacher trainer as a partner etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. what is your overarching mission your personal mission that guides you and all you do yeah I, I my core um, which the world of work I'm in is yoga and interestingly enough that mission would be connection, um, connection for myself and my sense of my spiritual connection, um, creating and helping people feel authentically connected in community. Um, I, I've seen that more and more naturally happen in, in my, my life and my work and my relationships. Um, I love when people get deeper connection to themselves. That's something that really lights me up is watching someone feel like really at home uh, with the, the core of who they are. Um, I love watching people connect with nature. I love the, the depth of um, authenticity of, of like the rawness and the vulnerability of connection with my, my significant other. Um, yeah, it, it kind of pushes and drives all the work that I do of like remembering that is the core of yoga is union of connection and it feels like a weaving thread through my life of of bringing all those parts like together as one mm, beautiful i'm excited to delve deeper into yoga with you on this conversation um and we we're yeah. talking a bit about it before the call and yoga is so much more than the physical asanas like the postures the poses we do on the mats um for me it's just a small little piece um according to like the yoga sutras of patanjali there's uh, 196 aphorisms and only two of them pertain to actual physical yeah. practice and um yoga the discipline of freedom is about living living it living it in your life so what does living yoga mean and look like to you christine yeah i'm so glad you brought that up i i still think there's a big uh not a misunderstanding, a lack of understanding of yoga. And um, I'm having these continual conversations of the nature of yoga today and how it's shifted even like from pre to post pandemic. And um, I, I think that in our Western world, a lot of people see yoga as like a physical workout or like, which is fine. It's beautiful. Like mobility, injury prevention, those are amazing. Um, or like to get their sweat on, but um, in terms of like moving more of into the depths of what yoga actually is, is about like what you just asked this idea of living your yoga. And, um, 
that you know can be simple things there's the yamas and the niyamas which are found in which we're talking about the eight limbs of yoga and they are i, I like to call them like the 10 non-religious commandments so there's things that pertain to non-violence of like hey what's my inner world like what's my narrative and my thoughts are, what are there what's that dialogue looking like in terms of my own and how i'm also using my words with other people how i'm consciously engaging with the planet around me um, the practices of truthfulness, the, the art of being content, the, the, the dance of moderation, right? Um, the art of surrendering to something bigger than yourself and not moving through life with attachment and practicing like open palms, you know, and, and learning the beauty of release. And I think these concepts can seem very um, cerebral. Um, which they, you know, the part of the practice of yoga is the, the depth of, you know, integration. But then the reason why I love yoga as it, its fullness is because you can en enact it in your day-to-day -day life. It's not just the 60, 90 minute class that you take. It's, it's how it engages with yourself um, in work and in, in life and relationships and the responsibilities that we carry out. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy that there's others like, you and I trying to teach that to our students that like the vibration, the frequency we attune to on our mat of peace, of love, of compassion. Um, it's taking that everywhere we go. Um, and in that safe space of that yoga practice and that yoga room that we can practice, we could practice um, leaning into our discomfort and finding comfort with their breath, with their posture, with their vibrational awareness, with their presence. And then like those reps help us, embody that everywhere we go so thank you yeah, for sharing that you're absolutely uh, right it's yeah um so how you kind of give us a glimpse of how you're living yoga how about giving mm -hmm. yoga how are you currently giving yoga what does that look yeah. like for you Whew, it's a uh, it change i mean i've been with you um prior and i feel like each time is a new rendition of what that looks like for me which it's great. It's about evolution. Um, and so like my early days, it was like teaching, you know, dozen to 20 public classes at studios a week. And then as I continued my education, I started, you know, teaching senior yoga. I started teaching more restorative therapeutic practices, um, meditation, sound healing, working with athletes and, um, and then eventually it led me to start holding space in the world of teacher training. So people would come and wanting to learn how to become a teacher. And I've done that through formats that are like long over like weekends through a whole year or more intensive formats. Um, and then I ended up running uh, another international yoga school and learned the ins and outs of, you know, managing teachers and managing students and also teaching the trainings and that really shifted me into to go full circle back to like the thing that drives me is connection. And I find that yoga teacher training, especially done in an intensive format. So we put ours together in a three week, week format. It really removes distractions of work, of, you know, other relationships, even things like laundry or cooking, like all that's removed and taken care of. So there's that saying of wherever you go, there you are. Um, and that's really what happens when you do a destination yoga teacher training. So my, my whole focus right now is um, creating spaces and trainings and um, in, in Costa Rica, which I'm at right now, and Bali and Thailand, uh, for people to come in and immerse themselves deeper into the practice and, and go beyond the, the physical. Mm -hmm, beautiful. And I'm gonna, we're going to delve into why you're in Costa Rica and the trainings you're doing there. But first, I just have one more question. Um, for someone that would know nothing about yoga, how would you explain yoga to them? So how would you explain yoga to someone that knows nothing about it? Mm. Oh, I love that. <sighs> yoga to me is, I think it can change, but in terms of explaining it to someone who's new, it's about moving consciously in your body with your breath and allowing yourself permission to shift from your thinking mind and more into the wisdom of your feeling body. And in that way, we can start experiencing a sense of union or connection. 
um, and come back home to ourselves. Mm, it's a great start. Um, so Costa Rica, you're currently in the near the Pacific Coast, and you're leading a teacher training with um, this new yoga brand company that you founded with Giaconda Parker Sama Yoga House. Tell yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone listening, like, what is that? And yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we actually have our first teacher training. We'll start, you know, today, and you know, when people are listening to this, it'll be in in the the past, which is fascinating time uh so sama yoga house so sama in sanskrit means same or equal and you know gia will will share more with you too but gia has been in the world of yoga for over 25 years teaching and um, traveling and retreats and trainings and, and workshops and festivals and i've been in this industry working for over you know i think 11 coming up in 12 years now um, and we've crossed paths and, and in and out and, and worked in different platforms together. And I was, you know, I felt like I was in a really clear trajectory of a, a, a company that I worked for and helped run. Um, and things were just, you know, that feeling you get inside where there's like this whisper, this nudge, there's something more. And maybe that nudge sometimes is like, I think you're settling. I think you're playing too small. Um, I started having that. And um, I think it's because I value alignment so much that the universe is like, hey, you're not fully in alignment here. There's something else that you need to uncover. Um, and, and it just felt working with her very synergistic and it kind of just opened organically. We're like, hey, I think we need to create a yoga school School, an international yoga school run by yogis and yoga teachers um, who actually have like been in the industry heart it takes to hold space for people who want to dive deeper into yoga um, and so with our experience and our connection with teachers all around the world we brought on a really global teaching audience to represent the word sama of saying of you know, you could, we could have a teacher teaching that has more of an Indian background from India versus someone from the States. And it's not one is better than the other. It's actually both perspectives are really imperative and important. Um, and so we have equal respect for different lineages, different perspective, different backgrounds. Um, and then the word house um, emphasizes home within self and then community and a lot of yoga schools will have a 200 hour training or something of the sort and then the training ends and it just ends the experience is done and something we really are are seeking to put together and create is ongoing com community and connection uh with our teachers with our students and so it, it goes on and on um in terms of feeling a part of something bigger than ourselves. Mm, that's incredible. And the first teacher training starts today. Um, what's your vision with the Sama Yoga House? Like the, the training is, is about to begin. What is your long-term vision um, and aspirations for your project, for, your, for this new endeavor? Gracias. Yeah, I mean, we have really big goals and visions. Um, so we have seven trainings lined up for 2024 in Costa Rica and Thailand um, and in Bali. And then in 2025, we'll have a 300 hour, but bigger picture still is that word house also speaks to something uh, physical. Um, so part of our plan, business plan, but more of our heart plan is really to create um, brick and mortar studios um, that value the depths of yoga beyond the asana. So yes, the physical practice is, you know, what the world wants, but we also want teachers who take the time to weave in meditation, to weave in philosophy, um, to weave in more of the subtle practices. So we can kind of strip away the like 
fluff and, and flower um, and, and like really do the work uh, of creating impact and, and change on an individual and uh, a collective level. Mm, that sounds incredible. I, I love I love your vision and it's, you know, it's moving away from what North American yoga has become. And it's just really like an exercise. Um, and that's okay. Like, as you said, it's, it's getting people exposed and it's, it's giving them a thread to unravel yes. at, at their own time. Um, but I think the, the people practicing yoga in North America has expanded ex- exponentially over the years. And I think it's, it's time to kind of return back. Um, and that is like, like the first of the sutras yoga uh, atha yoga anushasanam like time for yoga is now and we could always practice that um now 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 yeah um through your yoga journey yes what i think yeah and i think i think oh Um, I was going to say, I think that when you talk about that sutra, um, that the word atta is now is like, it's directive is it's kind of a commanding of like, in this moment, now is the time, like, whatever you're experiencing in life, that's, that is the moment yoga has a place to like be birthed. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just like, okay, I'm going to carve out timing and go do yoga. I think this is the um, kind of the the complex nature of it we think we go and do yoga but it you know it goes back to what you were talking about is yoga is actually a way of living um, and and really that is the the origin and heart of what we want to create at Sama Yoga House is for people to live more holistic harmonious lives you know mm-hmm. whether that's in, in their work relationships or their partners or their family or you know, the time they spend with themselves. I think we're, you know, we live in such a fast paced world that that we get lost in what's important and what's not important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just returning to oneness, you know, um, the eighth limb, samadhi, um, or recognition of oneness with all things. And it starts now. And we, in the now, we always have that opportunity to return and to lean back into that union that union of ourselves with everything, the mind, the body, the spirit, and everything we see and perceive and are. So, Christine, um, through your yoga journey yes, thus yeah. far, through your yoga journey thus far, what have been your biggest learnings along the way? What have been some of the notable learnings um, that you've learned along the way? on your entire yoga journey to this point? Mm. My first that comes to my mind immediately is don't settle. Um, follow your heart. I, you know, your the, the intention of this podcast is the hero's journey. And mm. I come back to this a lot, but the, the, the book, The Alchemist, um, yeah. Any time that I feel like misled or, you know, confused or I, I remember that book because it's so simple and it's so beautiful where it's just, you know, that the journey of the alchemist is like, listen to your height. And I think yoga is this, one of the sutras is yoga chitta vritti nirodaha. Yeah. Yoga is the calming of the fluctuations of your mind. And when we allow calmness when you allow that the waves to settle in that space to like become spacious you can actually hear your heart and i really believe our bodies know uh when something's drawing us in the direction that is in true alignment towards ourselves or 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 the other times when we like contract right um and so i think yoga's biggest lesson to me is 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 as cliche as it sounds is really tuning into the wisdom of the body I've had so many moments uh, that I can remember in life that I'm like, ah, oh, I'm just going to do this. Like, this seems right. But in deep inside, I'm like, no, that's, I'm not, I'm not like flowing with universe now. I'm kind of like, I'm going to go this way when universe is like, hey, like, 
let's come over here. Um, I feel more free when I'm flowing with the universe rather than like pushing my own way or, or also playing small. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's been one um, big learning you've learned on your yoga journey. Don't settle, follow your heart. Uh, did you have another one that came to mind? Yeah, follow, following your heart and, and not playing small. I think another big thing with yoga is uh, this is more on a practical level, which is also important, is our bodies change. Um, and so our the, the physical practice of yoga is going to change. And I think, um, for example, I, gosh, was it a year, a year ago? It will be two years this July. So a year and a half ago, a cyclist and I I crashed, I landed, wiped out on the street, um, landed right on my elbow, broke my elbow, had to get an emergency surgery, got a metal rod and seven screws in my elbow. Um, and that road of recovery physically with yoga was, it was really humbling, um, eye opening, and also made me really appreciate how we can adapt. And so I had to like relearn how to do plank and low plank. I mean, that took so long. I no longer can do handstands. I used to love doing handstands. And so the, yeah. my, the shift physically towards myself is I, I really am not interested in like comp complex shapes anymore. I'm, I'm really cool with a simple physical practice. Um, and I think actually breaking my elbow was a, was a really great blessing. Um, in terms of like stripping away the, the other distractions and just making peace with my body and, and making peace with how my body changes. And, and that's okay. It doesn't need to do the exact same thing it did 10 years ago. And if I did, that would be, I mean, beautiful. And also it's strange, like change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. We were chatting with this before I hit record too, about, um, how sometimes like we are given the lessons the hard way because we're not listening. There's those whispers and I'm sure you are probably, you probably had these whispers as well, but it required like an injury or like something, something big because we're not listening to those, those little pokes, you know, the subtle cues. And I'm, I'm glad that you're able to see the yeah. blessings. And you know, I will. Th yes. Yeah. And another thing about this, Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think also injuries, uh, a big thing with yoga is when there is a yoga injury or any injury, like say you are an athlete and you get injured. I think yoga has this really beautiful dance of, of strength and ear ease, stira sukham asanam. And it's how can you be soft and strong? How can you move through life with like a resilient spirit and also be vulnerable? Um, how can you accept your current experience or your situation even when it's hard um and then still have the, the drive to move forward um i think especially with working with athletes you see a, an injury that happens with an athlete i know you've experienced it and i know you've talked with so many so many so many people who've been injured it's it's such a pivotal change there's so much growth um and perspective and empathy that comes out of it and um Sometimes those darkest nights are, are, you know, as they say, like the brightest of the dawns. Um, and I think in a, in a very practical way, that's what yoga has most recently taught me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so much wisdom shared already. And a lot of this wisdom um, is from your personal practice, your personal experience. But also it's been taught to you through your teachers, Let's take a moment to acknowledge some of your teachers, in particular your yoga teachers, um, who have guided you on your journey. Um, who are they? What does your yoga lineage look like in your eyes? Ooh, okay. So I'm here uh, with another fellow teacher who we were just having this conversation. I, it's it's fascinating. I think today in our yoga world has kind of vanished. Um, I think that was a very pre-pandemic thing. I think um, you would see a lot more strong, seasoned practitioners, 
And now I think a lot of those practitioners are still kind of practicing at home because a lot of those studios closed and that led this kind of gap. And there's a lot of new teachers that came out of this um, and a yeah. lot of new students. And, and what I'm seeing now in the yoga industry is people are really happy and content just coming to dropping into a class here and there. They think it's like a good, you know, physical practice or, um, you know, injury prevention. Um, so I think a lot of that idea of lineage has been, like dissipated. Um, I would say if I were to connect to any lineage, um, I, I really come from a lot of different lineages. Um, one of the most common would be an Ashtanga lineage. So I was very into the ritual of morning practice at 6 a.m., six days a week, working with one teacher, um, in the drishti, um, and creating a, a, a meditative experience in Ashtanga yoga. There's no music. There. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no distractions. The music is your breath. Um, and and be- I don't practice, nor do I teach Ashtanga yoga anymore. However, um, something I take from that lineage um, is, is the importance of the breath during the practice. And so when I teach yoga, I still use uh, often music, but most of my music is very instrumental. It's not current. It's not like hip hop. It's It's kind of this you know, there, there's waves of it, like um, swells of music, you can say, but it, it is very like grounded and instrumental to not uh, lose sight of more of the traditions of yoga. Um, yeah. In terms of philosophy, I really feel m- most connected to the yoga sutras. Um, so more on that path. Um, and strangely enough, tantra yoga is, is where the chakras come from. Um, and I really, really love the chakras because it's exploring non-duality and that life is not black and white. It's not linear and it's quite complex in the psychology of the chakras. I find it, it's a very, very useful and, and practical tool towards self-study. Um, and then in my last lineage, I would say is actually comes from an amalgamation of, I have a very near, um, a teacher I think of highly um, in terms of her ability to create unique sequences um, with the ability to weave in philosophy, um, artists and an art teacher. Um, and I find that I like to weave all of that together. Breath, really grounded energy, I love weaving in the eight limbs. I love love speaking into the chakras, more energetic sequences that I create. Um, So I really can't say it's just reverence to one person or thing. I think of a plethora of teachers, whether it's Mm -hmm. a human or not, that have informed my teaching. Right on. Thank you for that. Um, in the tr- in in this kind of same topic, um, what are you current studying? Where are you currently planting roots? Like, what are you most passionate about of studying at this moment in terms of uh, yoga practice and maybe beyond? Ooh, ooh, this is a good one. Um, I think at this point in my practice. I'm really drawn into meditation um, in particular um, and quieting my mind um, and, and feeling a connection to source and practicing the art of stillness. I don't know if I would necessarily say there's one specific style of meditation. I like utilizing pranayama. Uh, I like just sit like I one thing I like to do is just sit and with a soft gaze like just look out and and just be um I I like utilizing the chakras through meditation so it's not so much at this point in time reading is 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 more like yeah and it's it's actually now even you think of 
your whole yoga journey, it often, not always happens like that. You're, you're kind of hooked in through the asana, right? It's, it's the, the thing that's most tangible. And then you kind of like move your way. Maybe I moved through philosophy and like the inner work. And now I'm here. I'm like, I really like enjoy meditation with myself or being guided. Um, yeah, it hits home for me right now. Right on. So how would you describe um, to your students or to anyone really, like, what does your personal practice look like to you these days? So we're just like, how would you answer that question? What does your personal yoga practice look like mm-hmm. to you days? All encompassing. Yeah, uh, it's changed. Definitely. Uh, I don't really go. I'm, I'm kind of a nomad right now. I have not, I don't actually have a, a home. Uh, my, my partner and I, we, um, we put everything in storage um, and we've been nomadic since October. Um, so that being said, I, I don't, you know, I don't have a yoga studio I'm practicing at. Um, I really like my personal practice that looks different every day, day to day. Um, you, you know, I, I, some days it's only like 10 minutes. Other days it's a full encompassing journey. Um, I think there's so much freedom in that. I find that when we go back to yoga in terms of yoga as union, to me, it, it's not just the asana. Asana for me is like, I do micro breaks all day long. Like after this podcast, I'll get up and do like a five minute physical asana based reset. Um, I, my body really enjoys micro yoga sessions, um, now, um, currently with the amount of like travel and change that I'm doing. Um, but I also think that I can find and experience yoga when I'm running. Um, I don't listen to music when I run. I'm really focused on the sound of my shoe and the, the breath in my lungs and where my eyes are gazing. Um, I can recently, I've fallen in love with surfing uh, and I find like, wow, there's a profound union and oneness, um, with the elements of, of water and the power of the ocean, uh, it, that like everything else dissipates. And so I think yoga is so much more than like, you know, what meets the eye. And I've been, it's hard because I think yoga, like on social media is like, you see someone doing a handstand or like, I know a warrior two, and it's just, that's yoga. Um, which we know that it is, but I I really am at this place of challenging myself of allowing asana to encompass like all of it. That's not just this one thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. So you mentioned, um, you talked a few times now about your partner and I recall reading stuff you've made on your social media, just how you're really proud of this relationship you've called yeah. in um, and the growth that you've been able to um, m- both experience uh, with one another. Um, so let's kind of delve into that. Like, how did you call into this great p- partnership and what are the foundations to that? Yeah. Yeah. So we are engaged. Um, it's weird. I don't, we both don't really like the word fiance. So often we'll just call each other husband and wife at this point in time. Um, yeah. 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 So this is my person. I, I feel like, um, that journey with my elbow was also a catalyst of me uh, really getting clear and leaving a relationship that I knew was not in alignment. Um, So that was the first step, you know, creating the space for me to enter into something new. Um, And I was really pursuing something new in my life. I was uh, really diving into triathlons and this was a solo endeavor. I didn't know anyone doing it. And so I was teaching myself how to swim in the, the springs in Austin, Texas. And one morning at 6 a.m. is when we met, um, which is really sacred. The Barton Springs is like the, the gem of Austin, Texas. Um, and we just, you know, connected, chatted, and, and then time went by. And uh, maybe it was like a few weeks, a month later, we again in the morning connected there, just happenstance. We exchanged numbers. We went on like a few group bike rides. It was very much like a friend experience. And um, as we started talking, it was, it was very uh, based in a spiritual connection um, and felt really pure and uh, easeful. Um, and it just, as time went on, there's just more like magnetism between us. 
um, in the way we choose to live our life and the way I choose to live mine, the passions. You, he wouldn't call himself a yogi. Um, he, he's a runner and a, a soccer player and surfs and uh, he'll do, he'll, he will do yoga, but he's quite uh, physically tight. Um, um, but his heart and his mind are very um, spiritually clear and clean. Um, and it drives everything that he, he does. Um, and he actually, I, I must say, like the, the love and joy in the play we have is incredible. There's a lot of play. Um, for example, like the other day after work, we were on, on this property, we were here in, in Costa Rica and there's a pool and we were like, let's just see how long we can hold our breath underwater and timing ourselves. Like, I think there's this, there's this element of uh, playfulness that keeps everything like curious and, and vibrant and fun. And then it's not just like this thing to take so seriously. Um, he I, is definitely my biggest inspiration for starting Sama Yoga House. Um, obviously, Gia and I's like thing that we birthed, but he is definitely in terms of the business world, a, a driving force of inspiration and like, you know, in terms of like numbers and projections and, and that side of that, giving us a platform and foundation of belief and um, what we're doing. He runs his own um, business called Good Wolf Provisions. And it also inspires the heck out of me. It's a lot of um, mushroom based, not psychedelic mushrooms, but like lines made cordyceps um, products um, that are like, you can add into coffee. It tastes freaking delicious. Um, they do like pre-workouts that are super clean, all food based, all vegan. There's no additives. There's no chemicals. Their packaging is everything what he's doing. There's a lot of intention behind. It's nothing like, let's just put this together. Um, and I, I've never had that in, in a relationship of like, I'm genuinely like every day, like, wow, like this person is like really living their dharma and their purpose and with such intention and with such love and such creativity um, and risk. I think there's a lot of, magic on the other side of risk and I, I've really never personally met someone who's just gone full in um, and it gave me a lot of self-belief um, it's really really special he's amazing mm -hmm. okay congratulations I am happy for you both and I want to um, just examine this a little further um, but first like the foundations for you to call this in so you you said with the elbow injury injury um, you were in a relationship and you realized that was not serving you. And then you, you left that one, you ended that one. And so in between that relationship and then the new one, what were yeah. the foundations to call that in? And then after that, like, what are the foundations to keep your current relationship strong? Oh, yeah. We, we talk about this a lot because we have friends that, you know, you're using dating apps and things like that. I did not, we did not find each other that way. Um, I, I really wasn't looking, I think is a foundation. I really <laughs> was at the, I, I really believe that he was not looking either. And we've talked about that and share that with friends of like, um, I think it's more about pursuing the things that light us up as individual beings. Um, so I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I was just curious into triathlons. I was like, I, I just want to like see what this world is about. I want to learn a new skill. I didn't know how to like swim. I just, that curiosity for my own life was a foundation that propelled me forward. That's how we met is I was just like, I wasn't going to like bars or, you know, going out at night being like, you know, prowling the land. Like that's not who I am. Um, I knew that the, my foundation first was also one making the space. So like getting really removing all the distractions that weren't really in line with myself. Um, and that takes a lot of courage Two, I, I would say it was being curious. I really, for, for life, I just was like, there's what else is in this life. I want to know more. I want to unpack more. I want to explore more. Um, and I found that curiosity has led me to a lot of really cool other platonic relationships too. I mean, it has connecting with you. Like that was because two people were curious you know, and, and curiosity with courage to be like, Hey, like you're, you seem really cool. Like what's your story. I want to connect with you. And I think that is um, a really beautiful 
character trait is being curious. Um, I also, I think we both were very clear that it, there was no like agenda. Like there was just like, let's just see where this goes as human beings um, was also a really important foundation of, we were just, who are you? Like, what are you about? I, we, we joke, I didn't know his job, nor did he know my job for like, almost like two months. Like I, we really didn't even talk about our work. Um, it was it really just about getting to know each other. And um, I think there's a purity in that. Um, mm. And then in terms of keeping us going, it's really interesting because we also, you know, we both are working remotely. We both spend a lot of time together, uh, which we love. Um, I think one I'm observing is finding some physical activity to do together. I think, you know, there, there's that saying of couples who like work out are healthier, happier. I really believe that. Um, so we run together, we run in groups, we, you know, we'll swim, we'll surf, we'll, we'll do yoga by ourselves. We'll go on bike rides or, um, and it's not just our, us, you know, going through life. This is with friends and other community and I think they're being physically engaged with each other is, is really healthy and releasing those hormones of like connection and, and you know, love. Um, we're both very open to life. Um, and, and we don't, we both don't want to settle. So I think it's also finding someone who has the same values. Something that we explored early on in our relationship um, is he had asked like, what is your relationship with your family like? Uh, he found that really important and as do I um, you know I've, a lot of people have vastly unique family experiences that are hard or traumatic but his interest was not necessarily in that but like is it important to you like do you maintain your relationship with your your mom or your dad or your siblings and uh, we both do that and that I, to him was a re revealing element of like how do you show up and engage in other relationships that it's not just about like him and me, but like, how am I connecting with my friends and his friends? Right. And, and having other parts of our lives is, is, is it's not just like being this codependent thing of ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. And I would say the last thing is giving each other space to, to be our own self, right? Like he is himself and I am myself. We are not the same. Um, we work really differently. Like I can go in and out of projects and he's super focused and respecting that and, and, and knowing that life is a dance and kind of dancing with the universe through that too. I think if that helps the, the listeners on here, I think it's, it's really staying true. Um, remembering, I think that love is like the most valuable sacred thing that we have in this life. Um, and not taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. And that brings me to the next question. And you just close with that, with that, that's love. So through this relationship and just through all your experience with life thus, thus far, what have you learned about love? What does that word, what does that mean to you? Man, I, I feel like really since we've been together, it's given it a whole new meaning. Um, it has redefined it. Um, I, I the, he knows me like one so well I think love is about vulnerability um being able to really show up and have those hard conversations when you know humans don't want to um holding space for someone else to do the same um removing a critical mind and and entering more into a compassionate heart acceptance of someone and where they're at and not pushing them to where you think that they should be um i think love is also action i think it, it requires a choice it's not just a feeling um uh, there's a choice in showing up in terms of like the acts of love that you give to someone that might be small like a sweet message um or voice message um, or, you know, picking up their plate or cleaning up once in a while, just these little moments that can actually make someone feel seen and respected and heard. Um, slowing down, 
with one other person is love. I think in in the beginning of a relationship, it's very much the energy of like chemistry and this is new and fresh. Um, That's, I don't know if I would call that love. Maybe that's like an introduction to love, but I think love is is more of like the real day-to-day, like we're in life, doing life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, What else do you know to be true? So that's what you know to be true about love. What else do you know to be true? Mm, life is uncertain. Uh, life is mysterious. I, I, I think this is what I'm noticing to be more and more true, that I don't know at all. I know very, very little um, in this vast cosmos that is limitless. Um, as humbling and sobering that it that knowledge is it gives me a lot of peace to take the leap and 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 again not play small is what i know to be true if you play small that's what your experience is going to be you know have we got one life is what i know to be true and i i i don't i don't want to miss it I think your life is what you make of it. Um, And I I really am seeing that as to be true is that Mm -hmm. you're, you know, you have an intention and you follow it with action. That's manifestation. That is putting life, putting an idea or a desire into reality is through through the actions that you take to follow that through. I, I really believe that to be true. I think that the word manifestation has been put around a lot, but I'm actually tangibly starting to see it. It's like where you're putting in intention and energy and focus. Um, That's true. Life happens that way. Yeah. Um, Fear gets in the way. Um, Yeah. What would you share like with your students and your training about fear? Um, They've, they've overcome one fear and that's, they said yes to the training. They've come to Costa Rica but fear is going to come up through them on their whole journeys as, as yogis and as yoga teachers. Um, what would you like to share with your students um, during this training and just anyone listening along on how to deal with that, that fear that keeps, that gets in our way. Fear keeps us frozen. It kept me frozen. Um, kept me like small. Um, I think having some sort of, faith whether that's in yourself or a practice or something spiritual connection gives you um freedom so like fear keeps you small and contractive faith opens you up and expands you think of like a flower i mean i don't know does a flower have a conscious energy of like i'm afraid to blossom maybe maybe not um but it does it anyways And it it exposes its most vulnerable parts to the world. And in doing so, it reveals its most beautiful parts. And there's Mm -hmm. like an aroma, a blessing, a color of beauty that's released. And, uh, you know, the bee comes and shares that pollen with the world. And yeah, I I think also fear in a lot of ways can keep us safe, right? Um, I'm, I'm not saying neglect that part of the fear of like a gut fear of like, okay, something's wrong here. Um, but in terms of like, if you got a roof over your head, if you're having eating food, you know, you have, you've shelter, like these really important clean water, necessary things. Like that's root chakra. If we have those things like, which is amazing and a big privilege we have and um, go for it, like go pursue the dream reach Mm. out to the person, like take the risk, make the call, go book the ticket, like do it. Like the only thing that gets in our way most of the time is our own sense of self. Um, Oh, everyone's going to have opinions and judgments. There's going to be the the naysayers along the way. Um, But that's also if you succeed and and go for it, those people will be there too. Um, So you just, again, going back to the hero's journey of like really tapping into your heart using that as your compass um and and looking fear is walking one hand with fear and the other with courage i'm afraid but i'm courageous and i'm going to go forward it doesn't mean i'm never afraid or people won't experience fear but it's Mm -hmm. at the same time harnessing the courage 
Yes, while being rooted in faith, I believe. Um, and I this is like something I'm I'm very curious to discuss with you now. Um, and it rely it's it, in pertinence to the chakras in in pertinence to the importance of being rooted, like you just mentioned. So I feel like in the spiritual world, um, the yoga world, I have quotations here, the yoga world, um, there's a lot of people really like caught um, or uh, like consumed by being in like the third eye um, and the crown chakra and spending a lot of time there. And I think like it's it's, that could pose a lot of danger if we're not rooted um, in our root chakra and our sacral chakra. Um, can you talk about that? You are totally right. And I talk about that in yoga training a lot. Um, yeah, it seems like there's so many people who are just kind of out there, like really like extra woo woo about things. I mean, this is my whole world. So, and also like we are in this physical body on this physical earth. Um, and we're, we're, we're part of it. And if we forget um, what, where we come from and what we're a part of, like all of that work is, 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 is I don't want to say a waste, but it's not founded in, in anything, right? The, the idea of like, how do you build a, a skyscraper is you've got to dig really freaking deep in order for it to be stable. Um, I think there's more like a lure and like, ooh, like it's sexy to think about just third eye and the crown and like the celestial world. Um, I don't think it's as like romantic to think about the earth. I mean, the earth is like dirt, you know what I mean? And you get mud on your hands or feet, but like, that's what we need. I think also we're in cities so much that we are just not as connected to the elements of grass and sand and dirt and trees and rocks and mountains and rivers and oceans and uh or we're really you know we're so plugged into the phones and emails and social media that's all in the eyes um that's why i you know two reasons i really like to keep my like when i teach asana quite it's not boring but simple is because so many people are spending so much time up here there's so much stress and overthinking and over intellectualization that they're not in the body. Um, and I also think we're not barefoot. I know that sounds so simple, uh, but we're very rarely barefoot anymore, right? A lot of times people wear shoes in the house. Uh, when's the last time, you know, to the listeners, did you go outside and put your feet on the grass or the sand or on a riverbed? Really? And I know that sounds so out there, but that's like, that's us. And so it's, it makes sense that so many people are spending so much time up here in the mind and the third eye. Um, I think it's also kind of a a distraction of looking at and taking time to nourish our foundation of stability and source connection and presence and slow down. Yeah. One thing that also flashed into my mind when you're in your chat talking was um, I think another reason people escape to those upper realms is because there's a lot of trauma caught in our lower chakras, right? There's a lot of trauma caught in the root and sacral chakras. And so what have you learned about healing your trauma or like in others? Like, yeah, what have you learned about trauma? Mm, you're totally right. Um I, I agree that there's that distraction of upper spaces. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is, is slowing down. Um, I, I see a lot of people with like a lot of anxiety, um, which, you know, it also exists up here. Um, yeah. So, you know, and then it's interesting. I think we, those, these types of individuals who experience that, tend to go to the classes that are like fast music, fast classes, right? They're just like, go, 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 go. Um, And that's just perpetuating that loop. So first things first, um, one amazing yoga teacher I love, who is a yoga, uh, a physical therapist, um, talks about removing, first removing the barriers and then thinking about what are you going to start integrating in? So for someone who, let's say, is, is really hyper anxious, 
uh, really worried about the future, uh, they first need to start removing the things that are perpetuating in them and th those cycles. So like stop going to those fast paced classes, which might feel super counterintuitive or like stop going to the, like the spin class or, you know, the hit workout class, just maybe remove a few of those a week. And then you start adding in something that's more nourishing, slow flow. Like not necessarily just like sit and meditate. I'm not talking about that because that goes up here, but like a really slow, grounded, somatic, like experience practice, um, exploring yin yoga, restorative yoga. Um, yoga nidra can be really healing as an exercise in the meditation, but it's still very body-based. I, th I think these practices, uh, you know, aren't like sweaty and sexy and alluring. Uh, but they're really powerful and they're really healing. Um, I, I, I really believe slowing down is, is a big way into to healing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will just start with that. It's like really examining how we fill our schedules in our lives. I mean, I'm guilty of it too, of like, okay, how much can I get in and, you know, work-wise in one day and, and do this and see this person and, um, another part of healing would be setting up more boundaries. Maybe it's in your friendships that aren't really catering to your growth. Uh, maybe it's a work relationship, a romantic relationship and, and being, you know, having the courage to be clear, to be like, hey, no, I'm not going to be opening my emails after 5 p.m. workday. I really need to like be with my family now. Um, and, and having that, um, I think trauma is, 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 very vast and, and everyone's experiences can be micro traumas or macro traumas. Um, everyone's healing journey is going to look a little different. Um, you know, some, like sometimes it's it, yoga is not going to be the cure all, you know, there needs, maybe needs to be talk therapy. May, may, maybe there needs to be like psychedelic one-on-one -on -one therapy. I, I don't, I'm not going to be the person that will say like yoga is going to fix the root cause. I, I do think there's a lot of um, tools that can really help. Um, another one would be pranayama, learning to regulate your breath and be more intentional with, uh, especially for that anxious style of human, like slow, more deep, nourishing exhales, belly breathing, um, so that the body isn't rigid and tight and holding and constrictive all the time. The body first needs to to soften. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. So much wisdom shared in this conversation. And um, I close every podcast with a final question. And we've gotten to that point. Um, when we last talked on Welcome to the Winner Circle in January 2021, um, you answered this question as such. Well, first, I guess I'll ask the question. And that is just through all the highs and lows that is this journey of life, what do you feel has been the greatest life lesson you've learned on your path? that you feel called in this moment to share with us. And in January, 2021, episode 36, your lesson that you wanted to share um, was that you are the point the universe is trying to make three years <laughs> later. What is the lesson that you feel most called to share with us? Maybe you've said it, uh, maybe you haven't, but yeah. What is that lesson you'd like to close with? Yeah, I do remember sharing that. I still really live by that. Um, I, simple. And I'll try to explain it as simply as possible, but follow your dharma. Follow that deep driving desire that you think about, that you're excited about, that you feel passion, that you feel most alive about. That is there for a reason. Um, it wants to be uncovered. It wants to be explored. It wants to be pursued in this one wild life we have. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Christine. I'm excited for you and all your students and the evolution of the Sama Yoga House for people wanting to connect with the Sama Yoga House. Um, they can find that online, sab samayogahouse.com. It's also on Instagram, sama.yoga.house. And they can find you on Instagram at Christine underscore Anderson underscore yoga. Um, any last words? Thank you so much. You have such a beautiful spirit. I love what you're doing. It's, it's, you're such a gift to the world. Beautiful. And as every episode closes, we bring our fist in for digital fist bump.
the winner circle a choice. Boom. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Have fun with your training. Cheers.